Hello everyone and welcome back to Ward number 13. I'm your host today, John, and today we're going to be taking a look at more times that people left up. So kick back, relax, and enjoy. If you like the video, please feel free to subscribe and leave a comment and say hello. Otherwise, enjoy. Our first story tonight talks about a family keeping a secret that they all had in common but nobody spoke up and it leaves them with a pretty bad taste in their mouth. Time I effed up by uncovering a dark family secret. Alright folks, this is a tale about Heineken beer. This beer has always been a staple in my family. Some of my earliest memories of my father are him drinking from the iconic green glass with my uncles. My grandfather was a stereotypical strong patriarch of the family. He never drank, but he would spare no expense buying rack after rack of Heineken to keep everyone satisfied at every family event. He passed many, many years ago, but the tradition has been faithfully kept ever since, both as an homage to him and to all the wonderful memories we've made with Heineken in hand. My very first beer was a Heineken. I hated it. I've given it plenty of chances since, but every one I've ever had tastes stale and watery. I could never understand why my whole family happened to love them. Probably a matter of sophistication. I never told my father because it would have broken his heart. In fact, like a dutiful son, I would always drink one or two to join in with all the other men and the enjoyment of their beloved beer. A few days ago, my father was hosting an event and entrusted me to provide the drinks. I figured, hell, people have been downing the same old beer at these things for 40 years. Let me get some other brews in the mix. I bought plenty of a few different brands that I love, Sam Adams, Dos Equis, Guinness, Bud Lime, and only one single six pack of Heineken. I snuck everything into the cooler so no one would figure the small proportion of Heineken in the mix unless they counted, and sat all day marveling at my own mischief. The day turns to night, and at the end of the party I look in the beer cooler, to my satisfaction, every single beer is gone, except, wait a minute, the six Heinekens? Very strange. I told my dad there were some Heinekens left over. Bear in mind, he didn't know what I had done. He probably figured a bunch of the other ones had been consumed. Dad only drinks for special occasions, so he suggested we give them to my uncle, an infamous lover of the beer. But he had already left, so we found his son and went to give it to him to deliver. The smile immediately left his face when we told him the plan. His eyes went straight to the floor, and despite being a grown man of almost 40, I heard fear in his voice when he said it. Guys, I gotta be honest with you. My dad can't stand Heineken. We laughed because we figured it must have been a joke, but he kept staring at the floor. The smiles left our faces. We suggested he take it for himself, but he admitted he also didn't like Heineken. Well, I'm not gonna drink it, my dad said. What? Why not? Yeah, you guessed it. He hates Heineken as well. At this point, I admitted that I shared their opinion and told them what I had done that day. Slowly, the realization of what was going on dawned on all three of us. We went around frantically to all the people at the party asking for their input. Every. Single. One. Hey, Heineken. Young and old, father and son, blue collar and white collar, American and foreign born. Not a living soul actually likes the beer. They all just bought it because they thought another guy wanted it. People were distraught. We've all spent so much money buying this overpriced beer for decades because everybody just assumed the other guys liked it, and everyone was too polite to say how much they didn't. All those fond childhood memories of my father and my uncles sitting on the porch are now tainted with the knowledge that Heineken objectively sucks. In ceremonial fashion, the final six were dumped in the backyard, the last of their kind to be seen in our household. It felt eerily like a funeral. On the bright side, everyone will actually enjoy their drinks at family events from now on. And for our second story, far be it for me to come back so quickly, but I had to comment on this story. It talks about a relationship and the person is seeking advice. If you want my advice, I'm quoting a young person here. She fought the streets. Time I effed up by getting so drunk, I, 27 male, couldn't stop my girlfriend from ghosting me and talking to other guys all night. And then I ruined everyone's night by getting mad and almost ending up in a fight. So, I'm in this super embarrassing situation right now. Girlfriend, 27 female, and I, 27 male of 8 years, went out last night with a group of her friends. I'm visiting my girlfriend after being in an LDR thing since one and a half years. 
and it's just my fourth week here. Anyways, all of us had been drinking all day. I pre-gamed heavier than everyone else. We go out to this club, and my girlfriend says to me in front of all her friends, can I have random guys buy me drinks tonight? To which I replied, of course, if I can buy random girls drinks tonight, which to me at the time felt like an appropriate response. The rest of the night, I literally saw my girlfriend go from guy to guy just talking to them while I looked on, honestly disappointed that my girlfriend isn't here using this opportunity to speak to me or spend time with me or dance with me. Anyways, I was definitely the most hammered out of everyone and her actions hurt me a lot. I don't want to say to anything because I didn't want to cause a scene in front of her friends group who I had met literally for the first time two days ago but my displeasure quickly was evident on my face. Hey, guys, friends, then pulled me to the side and would tell me shit like it's effed up what she's doing, but also take my girlfriend's side, saying she's not like this ever. During all this chaos, one of her girls goes up to her while she's being talked to by this guy for 15 minutes and grabs her. She pulled her off that guy three times and told her your boyfriend doesn't look happy, that's when the guy she was talking to grabbed my girlfriend by the wrist and then at that point I lost my shit. Tried walking up to all of them and said, yo guys, what's wrong? I had like three of her friends at this moment hold me back because they thought I was going to smack the guy or something. Anyways, this ruined everyone's vibe and the night and we went home shortly after. I was definitely drunk, underslept and not at my sharpest. But did I deserve to be ignored the entire night by my girlfriend at a night out with her friends? It just felt so mean of her. She didn't talk to me or dance with me all night. I know I could have pulled her off those guys myself at any moment, but I just didn't think I'd ever be in a relationship where I'd have to do something like this while I'm in the same damn room as my partner. I feel so humiliated and hurt about last night. I really need advice about how to navigate this situation from here. Today's the last day of our trip, and then we head home. I don't want my girlfriend's friends thinking less of her because of me. I also don't think I want to be in this relationship anymore. Am I overreacting? P.S. If you're going to say, I should have gone up to the other girls and bought them drinks, that's just not the vibe I'm in, ever, when I'm out with my girl. Time I effed up by going on a night hike with friends. For context, this was actually in mid-March of this year, but I'm still feeling the effects. A youth group that I-18 female am a part of was doing a night hike, and I decided to go with two of my friends who'd been some of my best friends for about seven years. I forgot my inhaler for this hike, which I didn't think would be a big deal since my asthma is mild, and I haven't had an attack since I was in kindergarten. Well, this hike was surprisingly steep, and for quite a while it was all incline with no flat parts to rest at. I wasn't very active during much of quarantine so I'm not as fit as I used to be and because of my lack of fitness and how strenuous the hike was, I found that I was struggling to breathe, struggling more than I ever had before. I asked my friends repeatedly if we could take a break because I was struggling to breathe and I even said once that I forgot my inhaler but they kept telling me, you got this OP and keep going and they refused to stop and pretty soon I was eating their dust. We had been told before the hike started to stick with our buddies, since it was very dark out and there are coyotes around, but they left me alone and I felt like I had to keep going without stopping because I didn't want to get left behind. I could tell that I was the last one in the group by far, but I kept pushing even though every step hurt and my breaths were getting shorter and shorter. Then suddenly I couldn't breathe. I was having an asthma attack for the first time in 13 years, give or take while all alone in a very dark mountain with no inhaler. I started to panic, but I remembered that I had read online that you needed to sit down, sit up straight, and remain as calm as possible while taking big, slow breaths if you didn't have your inhaler. So I sat up straight and tried to remain calm while taking slow, deliberate breaths. I have no idea how much time passed exactly, but it felt like 10 minutes maybe, and eventually I was able to breathe again. Though my airway still felt relatively tight, I began to walk again, slower this time, taking breaks and making sure I was taking deep, slow breaths. I had my flashlight on while I was walking, and a group of four adults had seen it and waited at a point ahead of me so I could catch up. When I got to them, they asked what was wrong, and I just started crying while trying to catch my breath, and I explained that I had an asthma attack but no inhaler. 
I hadn't met any of them before, but they were very nice and said they would walk slow with me, telling me to take as many breaks as I needed. They made polite conversation with me, but I felt incredibly embarrassed and angry the whole time. When we got to a point on the mountain with cell service, I got a text from one of my friends saying, You good? I said I had an asthma attack. Then they asked if I was with someone and said that they felt bad for leaving me behind. I didn't respond because I was pissed off. After a while, they caught up with the group at the end of the hike, and the man who was in charge of the activity was very worried about me and seemed a bit angry at my friends for leaving me behind and gave them strict instructions not to leave me behind on the way back down. When I first saw them, they laughed awkwardly and asked if I was good, and I said yes, but nothing else to them. I wasn't having it. Instead of apologizing or acting worried at all, they just laughed at my predicament. What lovely friends. On the way back down, they made awkward conversation, but I wasn't really giving them much. And, funnily enough, one of my friends started to walk way ahead a few times, and each time my other friends would laugh and tell her that she's leaving someone behind, which felt great. The next day, they left a half-hearted apology note and a plate of brownies at my door, but I didn't respond because I was too angry and didn't want to say something I might regret. I acted normal around them and the rest of my friend group at school, but ever since this happened, they just have not hung out with me at all. They haven't invited me to anything once since this happened. The entire friend group has just iced me out. They were still normal and nice at school on the rare occasion that we were all around each other, and they like my Instagram posts, but they just don't text me or invite me to anything. Now it's awkward with them, and it's like we aren't even friends anymore. We graduated a month ago, and still nothing, so it's not like they're busy with school. I have other friends I hang out with who are great, and I have found that I am much happier with them. They can actually address conflict, instead of ghosting people as soon as any conflict arises. And I'm certain that none of them would leave their friend behind on a mountain in the middle of the night, but it still makes me sad losing a friend group of seven years because I had an asthma attack. Moral of the story is, don't forget your inhaler on hiking trips.